Throughout the Psalms is the notion of imprisonment. David, the author of many of these Psalms, had plenty of experience with imprisonment, being pursued by the mad king Saul for many years, then pursued by his own son Absalom, who actually forced him to abdicate the throne until Joab killed Absalom. Speaking of Joab, he killed David's son against the strict instruction of David. And David could do nothing about it, the way the politics of his kingdom were running at the time. So he was, in a sense, imprisoned by his own right-hand man. I suppose when I say imprisonment, I mean it in the broad sense. David was not free to come and go as he pleased. He was constantly surrounded by enemies. They were always hemming him in, and his life was marked, essentially, by a series of narrow escapes. Kind of like just about every Star Wars movie. In the original trilogy, Luke Skywalker, Princess Leia, Han Solo, and the rest of the Rebel Alliance were always on the run, finding themselves, for example, on the ice planet Hoth, (laughs) which they could have filmed right here in St. Catharines if they could have waited till today. Every time they hid somewhere or blew something up, Darth Vader and his emperor were always one step behind. Fortunately, the Imperial stormtroopers couldn't hit the broad side of a Tatooine cantina with a blaster if they were standing inside, so our heroes always escaped, except for that time Boba Fett captured Han Solo and sold him to Jabba the Hutt, encased in carbonite. Now that's imprisonment. Imagine the emotional toll experienced by those in the Rebel Alliance. It's important, I think, to remember that Saul was the mad king because God made him that way. When God rejected Saul, he took away his Holy Spirit and gave him an evil spirit in his place. That evil spirit tormented Saul. But he was, in a manner of speaking, hell-bent on killing David. If you do the math on that, you end up with this equation. God sent Saul to kill David. God sent Saul to kill David. When I kept silence, my bones wasted away through my groaning all day long. For day and night, your hand was heavy upon me. My strength was dried up as by heat of summer. And then a pause. It says, Selah, which I interpret tongue-in-cheek to mean Guitar solo. Get it? Selah? Solo? The point is that you're supposed to stop right there. Let the music play and think about what was just said. Your hand was heavy against me. I acknowledged my sin to you, and I did not cover my iniquity. How could he? He was hiding in a cave surrounded by the mad king Saul and his best military. It's time to make peace with God, isn't it? Have you ever had a moment like that? Have you? An emotionally draining or an emotionally excruciating moment where it was you and God and no one else? In fact, there is someone else. Someone is out there to get you and there's no more hiding. Even if they were evil... They might have been sent from God. Why? So that you might say to yourself, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. And as soon as you say that to yourself, God forgives you. Guitar solo while you think about that. Surrounded by evil, Now you're surrounded by saints and angels and all the host of heaven shouting songs of deliverance. 
Evil knows exactly where you are, but you are surrounded by a God who forgives. What power does evil have when you confess your sins? Confession sets you free, putting you within the protection of Jesus. You surround me with shouts of deliverance. Another guitar solo. Think about that. 